is there so much excitement about the brain? You see something in the paper almost every day. Well, there's a new day dawning for people who are investigating the brain. The thing they're finding out most in the last few years is that the brain isn't a static thing. The brain is a dynamic, moving, living thing that carries on growing if you do the right things for the rest of your life. You don't have to leave it and say, OK, I'm 50 now, and it's not going to happen for me, and my brain's going to decline, and it's all over. That's not true anymore. Now we know that the longer you live, the better you can get your brain to operate in certain ways. What is cognition, and, and, and why measure cognition at all? OK. The brain's real function in the world is to process information. And it does that in varying degrees across your lifetime. And it processes information in terms of emotion and in terms of thinking. And it gets better in terms of emotion as you get older. And the thinking changes across your lifetime. So cognition is the way we measure the way you process that information. What is web neuro? Web neuro is a toolkit that we've created. And all you need to do to use it is to have access to the internet and a PC. And you can do this in 30 minutes in the comfort of your own home, and you can assess your emotions, your cognition. You can get a pretty good idea of where your brain is at for your age and for your gender. And what, what will I learn from, from doing the, the web neuro assessment? What you'll do with using web neuro is gain a baseline on all of the features that make your brain a good processor of information and make you good with people in terms of recognizing emotions. So you can get a profile of exactly where your brain is at at any particular time balanced against our norm tables, which are quite extensive in our database. And, and how will this help me improve my brain health? Can I actually make a difference to my brain health? Um, for many years, we believed in the works of some scientists from the 80s that showed us that you were born with every bit of brain that you were ever going to have. We discovered in the late 90s that that wasn't true. And particularly looking at little things like songbirds, who every day have to add in 1% new brain tissue in order to create a new song. We discovered that human beings around 1999 have their own stem cells in their brain and can recreate their brain from scratch. This allows them to think and to do things differently. So if we can access that part of our brain that can strengthen itself, that can grow, we can improve just like the songbirds do on a daily basis. So. Um there are exercises and things that I can do that, that, that will make a difference? There's a lot of literature out there on what you can do to improve your brain functioning. Um, most of them say 10 steps to this or 20 steps to that. We have condensed that into what we call the big five. We feed the brain, we train the brain, we defend the brain, we befriend the brain, and we manage the brain. And I'll explain what I mean by that. We feed the brain the stuff that's good for it, because most of our neurotransmitters are taken from the food we eat, as well as antioxidants and other things that help overcome the pollution and the damage we do to our body. We have to train our brain. We have to give our brain things every day that are very novel and very complex that challenge the brain. We need to study. We need to learn. We need to do things, crossword puzzles, that increase the strength of the brain. So that's the train and the feed part of it. Now we need to think about defending your brain against the toxins, cigarettes, tobacco, street drugs, alcohol in excess, letting yourself get too tired, eating the wrong food. You need to defend your brain against brain injury. You also need to befriend your brain. Brains like ours are designed to be around people and to work with people. So if you can play games with people, if you can join a bridge club, a social club, a bridge climbing club, if you can walk with other people and talk with other people and have meals with other people, loneliness is not good for your brain. So you need to be around other people and socialize well. And the last thing you need to do is to maintain your brain by finding out where it is and trying to improve it. We have tools like that called Web Neuro. In order to maintain your brain and manage your brain, you have to keep your stress levels down. You need to learn to regulate your breathing and balance your nervous systems out by doing simple things every day and stretch and keep yourself well. So feed, train, defend, befriend, and manage your brain. That's the big five for improving yourself across the age gap. And I'll see a difference on Web Europe. Should I be retested? Well, the first testing of Web Neuro is not to shock you or to tell you that you're heading for something terrible. It's to give you a good baseline in your 50s and 60s of where you're at on all of these features. 
once you've been doing these things, living a good lifestyle, eating well, sleeping well, being a well person, you can then retest yourself for three to six months and see where you're going. Uh, there seems to be lots of brain tests and quizzes and, uh, and, and all sorts of games and things on the internet. How is Web Neuro different to all of those? Web Neuro is not a game. It is a, a very serious tool which has been used for many years in research and has an immensely solid database of people who are declared normal and people who have brain problems, such as those with mental health issues or who are dementing or who have attentional problems. And brain health, therefore, is not a way of improving your brain in itself. You don't go to brain health to be stimulated. You go to brain health for a very clear scientific view of what your brain is doing on that particular day. The other brain games and brain gym and uh, other things that you can do are very useful. But they need to both provide you with novelty and they need to also provide you with a challenge so that your brain can improve. Many of the games we see on the internet or other places do nothing for your brain, but they may just be relaxing. You've got to find the thing that challenges you. And that may not be in games. It may be in, in studying. It may be in doing another degree. It may be in reading Bill Bryson's book on the history of nearly everything, which every page has rich new data. The rule seems to be, if it's not new and challenging, it's not building your brain. Part of the excitement of the brain in the last five years is for the first time we can think about the brain as an organ that's accessible and test it in the same way that we would look for things such as high cholesterol for blood pressure. And we can monitor it and if we test it and we have detailed figures for the brain such as you get on web neuro, you can now say, well, my LDL cholesterol is this, my HDL cholesterol is this, my blood pressure is this, and my brain profile or my brain index is this. And while you're working on your cholesterol, which is good for your brain, and while you're working on your blood pressure, which is good for your brain, and while you're eating and drinking, exercising, and making sure that you've got the oxygen flow, you've got the nutrition, you're working on your brain as well. And you should be able to see the same results that you see in your cholesterol as you do in your blood pressure, you should see the improvements in your brain health because the brain is an integral part of all of those systems. So what has made it so exciting now is that the brain is no longer locked inside a black box for us. It's now open to scrutiny and that means you can get it, access it and you can take control of your own brain health. A lot of people, despite knowing all of this or beginning to understand all of this about the brain, are still cautious, are still wary about going there, about doing these things. But there's a reason to do this. We call it the Web Neuro Toolkit. And the design of this test is to show you not only that some things may decline across your lifetime, but to show you the strengths, the things that get better, your emotions, your decision making based on your emotions, your emotional working memory, the things that make you valuable as an older person, you are going to see strengthen and strengthen again and again. What you're going to see is not only a snapshot, perhaps, of some memory failure across your lifetime, but what you'll see is something that we've discovered goes against the stereotypes of aging, that people get better in many more aspects than they can expect to decline. If you go and veg out in the, in the armchair, if you do nothing about yourself, the chances of decline are going to get bigger and bigger as you get older. We understand that. What we've learned now in the take-home message, if you log in, and you test your brain, you're going to be happier with the results in the same way that if you know that your cholesterol is getting too high, you can deal with it and it's done. In the same way, if your blood pressure is too high, you can take the necessary steps to reduce it in lifestyle. Doesn't mean you have to take medication. Doesn't mean you have to go and worry about it day by day. It means once you've taken the action, you will feel better. And once you're into that whole situation of monitoring and strengthening your brain, you're on an uphill not a downhill. Okay, so where do I take the test? What you can do to take the test now is log on to the Alliance for Aging Research website in the United States of America and take the test for free as part of our research into the aging brains of one million Americans between the ages of 50 and 90 years old. If you want further information on Web Neuro, you can log on to our website and have a look at the various things we offer you there. That's www.brainresource.com.